Mark chapter 11 and verse 22 this morning. Mark 11 and verse 22. Amen. I hope you'll come back tonight uh, at 6.30. Our service begins. We will have Sunday night service. Praise the Lord. Just don't forget, not midweek service, all right? Don't show up Wednesday. No one will be here. Amen. But tonight we'll have service at um, 6.30, so there's no choir practice tonight. <laughs> you're going to feel like your Sunday just got longer. Amen. <laughs> there's no, no, no event, nothing to practice for here. Uh, but uh, the regular group up here, the worship team, 5.45, Abby already told you. I think that's the time. Is that right, Abby? All right. Mark chapter 11 and verse uh, 22. Are you there? Say amen. 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 And Jesus answering saith unto them. Now listen to this phrase. Have faith in God. Verse 23. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. So when you pray it, believe it, and if you'll believe it, you'll have it. Amen. Of course, praying according to the will of the Father, praying according to the will of God. A couple of weeks ago, I, I started uh, a message. I really have maybe two, maybe three parts to it. We will see. But I, I talked about faith on fire. Do you remember that? Faith on fire. And then I mentioned uh, the subtitle was authentic or synthetic, right? I mean, there, there was a time when everything was seemed to be authentic, but now we're moving into a time where everything's synthetic, amen? Make it look like the real thing, but it's not. Trying to fake us out, if you will. Uh, it's not the real or the genuine. It's artificial. It's the phony. But they try to make us think it's the real. They even call it things that make us think it's the real thing. But I pray this morning you'll open your hearts and let us preach a little while here. This morning, faith on fire. Father, I pray for your grace. I, I feel you, Lord, in my heart. I, I came ready this morning, Lord. I came ready to worship. I came ready to preach the word of God. And I pray that you will touch each of our hearts here today. I pray that heaven would talk, that heaven would open up. I pray for unction, the anointing, and the strength of the Lord. I so wonderfully blessed today to be able to have my daughter in the service with us, worshiping the Lord together. Thank you for keeping her safe. And Lord, we just ask that you would be glorified, that we lift up the name of Jesus and that you draw all hearts unto you. So I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let this be somewhat of a message or a Bible lesson or teaching uh, here this morning as we begin this new year of 2020. And as my wife said, it just sounds a little funny because back when I was a teenager, a little boy, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, you'd see science fiction movies of 2020. And that's right, you know, like the Jetsons and you see the uh, cars flying around and things like that. We sort of have that today. We have the hoverboard. We have cars and things like that. I guess they can drive and they can fly, but maybe not quite like the Jetsons. I remember a time when Mr. Jetson and his family went out to eat and they opened up the cover off of their food. They were in a restaurant and there was just this this little pill. That's all that they ate was this little pill. And they ate that little pill like a little aspirin. And they were stuffed. He walked out. Their stomachs were extended. Things like this. Amen. Be nice just to pop a pill and you're full and that's all that's to it. But it's a little bit more than that. Amen. But as we begin the new year of 2020, may we endeavor to have a faith that pleases God. Now this is your relationship with God. Uh, I'm responsible uh, for your, as your pastor to minister and to teach the Word of God, to live this life before you of what it is to be a man of God, a Christian filled with the Holy Spirit of God and of faith. But it is your responsibility in your walk with God. It's your responsibility to, to have faith. It's your responsibility to serve God, to pray, to worship, and to please God. Because all of us know that without faith we cannot please the Lord. It's faith that moves God, uh, heaven. It's genuine faith that moves God. It's faith that casts mountains into the sea. As we read, 
It's faith that raises the dead. It's faith that heals the sick. But it also takes faith to do this, church. Amen. It takes faith to praise God, just like my daughter was praying here this morning. Do you know it takes faith to praise God? You don't have to have anybody else in here to praise God. You can praise God by yourself. You can praise God with a few. You can praise God with many. The fact is, if there's praise in your heart, you'll praise. If there isn't praise in your heart, you won't say a word or a peep. That's all that's to it. It takes faith to praise God. It takes faith to serve the Lord. It takes faith to be faithful. It takes faith to be committed to Christ. It takes faith to bear uh, fruit in one's life. Now, Jesus said that, that, that we would know them by their fruits. And it also takes faith to have victory or to have joy. Do you know it takes faith to have joy or to have peace or to have power? It takes faith to love others as Jesus loves them. And I was reading in Matthew chapter 5, uh, verses 5 and 6 and 7, uh, chapter Chapters 5, 6, and 7 of Matthew. And, and just read that. You cannot read that without being convicted. Talk about the Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes. And to love your enemies. And, and if you have ought against the brother for out of reason, then that's murder in your heart and things like this. And that we're to forgive one another. Forgive one another. Forgive one another. We're not to seek after the worldly things of this life, but we're to seek after the spiritual things that God has to offer. Amen, my beloved. You read that, oh God, I fail. You know, you can read the Ten Commandments, and the Ten Commandments show us our shortcomings. It shows us our lack. It shows us our need for God. Thou shalt not bear false witness. You shouldn't lie. If you lie, you broke the law. You broke all the law. Therefore, you're guilty of sin, and you'll be judged because of your sin. But it points us to Christ, that we need a Savior. We realize we need God. In the same way as you read the Beatitudes, you'll also recognize, as you read that, oh God, even as a Christian, even though that we're saved, you'll say, oh God, I cannot do this by myself. I fail. I fall short. And I need your help. And I need your strength even to keep the Word of God and to live by the Word of the Lord. Does anybody here have a desire to live by the Word of God? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But it takes faith to love others. Amen. Love your enemies, Jesus said. Love your enemies, Jesus said. Love your enemies, Jesus said. Love your enemies. Amen. Christians can't even love one another. We can't even love one another. You know, there, I'm going to say this. There's a lot of hypocrisy in churches today. Maybe even in this one, hypocrisy. But Jesus says to love one another and to love each other, Paul said, without hypocrisy. And I pray that this coming year that each of us would make a true conscience effort by the grace of God to believe God with all of our heart. Why don't we come into 2020 and say, God, help me to believe you the way that you want me to believe you. It's my hope that we'll set more time aside to study the Word of God, that we will rightly divide the Word of truth. I, I want to spend more time in the Word as the apostles were able to set aside time in the Word and in prayer, time in the Word and in the prayer. And if the church operates right and if the, the members of the body of Christ will uh, help and volunteer and do their part then I believe that the pastor would have more time uh, for the word of God and for prayer. I pray that each of us would hunger after God more than ever that his church should be on fire for him. That his people might spend more time in prayer seeking his face not because they have to but because they want to I pray we would have a faith that would be unstoppable and would manifest itself through the character of each life Amen. If you're praying will know it. If you're praising, we'll know it. God will know it. But we'll see that manifest in your life. There'll be, there'll be a life in you and a joy in you and a peace in you. I didn't say everything would go good. You'll have bumps in the roads and trials and hardships. There'll be a change in your attitude and that your demeanor and in your countenance. There'll be a life and a glow about you like shown on Moses when he came down out off from the mount in the presence of God. They saw the glory of God on Moses. And I believe as we have the Holy Spirit dwelling within of our hearts. That darkened world out there will see that there is something in you. There is joy and a life and a power and a grace. There's love. There's something in you that's different. Amen. Amen. But uh, they cannot see it if you don't have it. I don't care if you carry a flashlight around 24-7. Go ahead. Carry a flashlight around all you want. But if it don't have batteries, it ain't lit. 
I want you to know that if it don't have batteries, it ain't lit. Amen. Go ahead. You try to turn it on, but if you don't have energy in it, if you don't have power in it, if you don't have electricity in it, amen, it's not going to shine. And if we don't have the Holy Ghost in us, if we don't have the power in us, if we don't have the Spirit of God in us, we're not going to shine either. But, oh, my beloved, I can tell you, we do have power and we do have life and we do have uh, electricity, if you will. We have the energy of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, dunamis, glory to God. So, therefore, our light can shine. Amen. Praise God. Now, there's a difference, as I talked about a few weeks ago, between authentic and synthetic Christianity. There's a huge difference between looking the part and being the part. There are those who are only concerned about their image, but they're not concerned about their relationship with Jesus. Can I hear amen out of that? And we are to be aware. We are to be aware of wolves and sheep's clothing, those who look the part, but they're not of the faith. And I have been uh, tricked by a wolf. I, I can say this. I, I don't know that I really have been tricked by a wolf in sheep's clothing clothing. I've always known once I met them immediately that they were a wolf in sheep's clothing, but I can't say that they tricked me, but I can say that they did do damage to this church and they did damage to this ministry. And we've had a few of those in uh, in the years at Word of Life and I knew it and God showed me, but I prayed, but still they caused damage. But uh, I I pray that as we discussed a few Sundays ago, um, we had a couple words. We talked about the word authentic, which means believable. It means reliable. It means genuine or real. And the other word is synthetic, which means not real, artificial or fake. Like a fisherman would take an artificial worm. And I told you the story, of course, when the hook got in my nose and things like this. But anyway, there's the artificial worm and then there's the real worm. And, 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 they, and they put them under the water. They look almost uh, uh, the same. Uh, the one looks almost real, uh, but the one is artificial. One is real. One is fake. One is genuine. And sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. And what we need to do is to decide whether we're living out an authentic faith or a synthetic faith? Can you say amen to that? We have to know. Are we living out an artificial or a genuine faith? And I believe that it can be determined by the choices that we make. Now, you remember the three different Bibles. Of course, I put them on uh, the piano here this morning. Of course, one of them is the uh, uh, faux leather. The one uh, in the middle is the faux leather. and uh, Or uh, can we say uh, fox leather, amen? Or you knew that was coming, honey. Or leather-like, amen? They'll even ever ties. It's leather touch or leather feel. Uh, It's fake though. It's artificial. There's no animal skin around it. There's nothing of it. It's just fake. It's vinyl. It's plastic. It's rubber. It's not real. But then there's the bonded leather. The bonded leather is the one on the bottom. And it has some leather mixed in with some uh, cardboard. So it's not fully leather, but just partial leather with cardboard. Genuine leather is the one on the top, the maroon, the burgundy one. And it's the real deal. It's genuine. It's authentic. It's uh, the real thing. Another way we could put it is like this. Uh, There's full faith. Uh, It's fake. It's not genuine. It's rubber, if you will. It's artificial. And then there's the bonded leather faith, which is a mixture of faith and of worldliness. And I believe that's a great deal of the church uh, today. And then there's true genuine faith who lives the consecrated life in Christ. And we all have choices that we make each day of our lives. And we've talked about these. And we must choose between some things in our hearts and lives. And I want to talk about those here this morning. Number one, as I referred to, we have to decide whether we are going to be God-ruled or are we going to be self-ruled. We all have a choice to allow God to rule us or we can choose to rule ourselves. Either we'll live a Christ-centered life or we will live a self-centered life. God will not make us and God will not force us. We are a free moral agent. And we can choose to follow God and obey the word of the Lord or we can choose not to follow God. God and choose not to obey the word of God. That choice is yours. But those who choose to follow God and obey the commandments and the word of the Lord, let me tell you something. That is a blessed life. Psalm 1 and 1 talks about that. It is a blessed life, my friend, but choose not to and therefore it is not a blessed life. But those who take their Bibles and follow God's instructions for their living are the ones who have moved from a synthetic faith to an authentic faith. It takes an authentic faith to live by the word of God. Authentic faith does something. It believes. It's 
stands. It trusts. It holds on. See, the Bible says faith without works is dead. James also said that I will show you my faith by my works. So there's a lot of talk today, but I believe that God is looking for action. We can say that we have faith, but the truth is our life and our actions and the way that we live reveals the kind of faith that we have. Let me tell you something, my beloved. I love you. I love people. I hope you love me. I hope you love people as well. But I I tell you what I hear a lot today in Christianity. I hear all the right words, but I don't see all the right actions. Come on, church. Help me out here. I see a lot. Oh, I'm at 20-something years of pastoring. 20-something, almost 30 years in ministry. I think just around the corner, I will be a saved for 28 years. So nearly 30 years in ministry and Bible college and and, and a youth pastor and a pastor and a church plant and all. I've met a a lot of people. I've come across a lot of people. And I've learned this one thing. People are good about saying one thing, but their actions, their lifestyle doesn't line up with the faith they say that we have. They say they have all kinds of faith, but one little thing happens. All of a sudden, we bow out. I've seen this happen too many times. I've seen it happen too many times, and I'm thinking in my heart and in my life, something is just not adding up here. Something is just not right here. And I think what happens is that if we are hearers of the word only and not doers of the word, then the Bible says that we are deceived. But the thing about deception is you don't know you're deceived. You think you're okay, but you're not. But maybe we're even deceived to a certain degree. Maybe that's something we need to ask God to search our hearts. Oh, God, I don't want to be deceived. Am I one of these that just talks a good talk, but I'm not living the life. Is there not action behind those words? I pray that in 2020, amen, my beloved, starting today, there will be action to our words, amen. We will live by the word of God, whether hell or high water, we're going to live according to the holy word of God, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. My beloved, listen to me. We don't work to have faith, but we work because we have faith, because we are in the faith. If we are to work to have faith that's called legalism and bondage but we work because we're in the faith doesn't do you not have a desire within your heart to serve god don't you just want to serve god don't you just love the lord are you mindful of god 24 7 are you thinking of god all the time is he on your heart is he on your mind are you meditating upon the word of god i'm telling you we can that's how we can be strengthened and renewed daily in our life and our walk with the lord unfortunately there's a lot of synthetic faith deeds days God help us by knowing and doing the will of God we are moving from self rule to God rule we are moving from a self centered life to a Christ centered life and there will be those who will continually struggle until they learn to completely yield their entire heart and their life to God that's the struggle really I mean your enemy is not me it's not it's, it's not other your enemy your enemy is you it's the flesh that flesh that that constant struggle you're always fighting with with Ishmael that that Isaac and Ishmael Ishmael constantly struggle and your flesh wants to do this and the Spirit of God is trying to lead you. You know what is right. You know what you should do is right. But that flesh, amen, it is a war. It is a fight. True life satisfaction comes when we realize that there is a God and a cause that is much greater than any one thing. Do you believe that? We have a cause, my beloved, that's greater than any one thing. They have the opportunity to pick up their cross and to deny themselves and to live a life that is purpose and that has meaning it has eternal value that is everlasting so the choice is are we going to be god ruled or are we going to be self-ruled but the second choice is repentance or retreat now let me deal with this just for a moment here this morning because as i go over this and as i look into this god shows me more and god reveals more to me now a great deal of the modern church has forgotten the lost art of repentance they have forgotten about godly sorrow and of recognizing that we sometimes wrong the lord and we need to get back on the right track now paul said this for godly sorrow produces what it re- produces repentance leading to what salvation so that means that one recognizes 
they're a sinner. They know that they need salvation. They know they need forgiveness. And then they're saved. They're not regretted to not be regretted. They don't regret that. But the sorrow of the world produces death, which means I'm sorry I got caught. Prisons and jails are full of them. The person with synthetic faith will sweep sin under the rug and not deal with it. They'll continue in on in their sinful ways. And the, the, they do what they want rather than what he wants. And they are concerned more about image than they are obedience. Now, but for those who truly confess their sins and repent and turn from their wicked ways are changed forever. Do I have an amen for that? Anybody know what I'm talking about? You are changed forever. Their sins are washed away. They become a new creation in Christ. They receive the Holy Spirit and they have a power that comes from on high. They are blood bought and redeemed. And the Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Anybody going to say so here today? Let the redeemed say something. Let them praise. Let them worship. Let them shout. They have a future and a hope through Christ. They have a fresh start and a new beginning. As the Bible says, old things are passed away and behold, all things have become new. See, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ becomes a new person. The old life is gone and the new life has begun. Glory to God. See, there's a difference between authentic faith and synthetic faith, but the choice is yours to be made. We can just sweep our sin under the rug, never to be dealt with, or we can confess it to the Lord in repentance, asking for forgiveness. Now, Peter said this. Peter was preaching. Pentecost had come. It was the day of Pentecost. God poured out His Spirit, and they had the divided tongues as a fire upon them. The presence of God is with the 120. And Peter would preach in Acts 3 and 19. He said, Repent, therefore. Did you hear that? Can you believe back then in the New Testament, in Acts chapter 3, that Peter is preaching repentance? Why? Because John the Baptist came preaching repentance. Why? Because Jesus came preaching repentance. I'm telling you what's killing the church today, what's destroying lives and hearts and souls, are that preachers are soft, they're yellow, they're no longer preaching repentance. They don't want to deal with it. They want to make everybody happy. I'm telling you, my beloved, they want to have a big church, so stay away from words like that. And so what we have here is that Peter is preaching the Word of God. He is preaching the Gospel. He is caught up in God. He is caught up in the Lord. And so Peter got up and he said, Repent! Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, these people said, what must we do to be saved? They're convicted. God is dealing with them. What must we do to be saved? Repent, therefore, and be converted. Listen to this now. Repent and what? Converted that what? That your sins may be blotted out. Anybody here have blotted out sins? Hallelujah. Now, I want you to realize the order of this thing. You are not going to have blotted out sins. You're not going to have forgiveness of sins. There is no conversion without first the primary. Holy Ghost, Spirit-led, filled order, and that is one repentance. Come on, church. Now, I'm going somewhere with this. It is repentance. And he said this. What happens after that? Your sins are blotted out. What happens after that? So that times, not time, but times, signifying that there will be multiple times of refreshing, refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Are there any saints of God? today that would say, Preacher, I need times of refreshing in my heart. I need times of refreshing in my life. I need refreshing to keep me awake. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, that would be a good start for a new year. Knowing that our sins are forgiven and that we're standing in right standing with God, Knowing that there isn't anything between you and God hindering your relationship. Listen to me. The sin in the closet, God sees it. The sin that you've hidden in your heart, God sees it. Those that know to do right and don't do it to them, it is sin. The thing we don't want to deal with. But the fact is, I want you to notice that repentance has something to do with with refreshing. Hear me out here. Refreshing comes as we first repent of sin. 
When we repent of sin, you first have to recognize you're a sinner. You have to recognize your guilt. You have to recognize the sin is there. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Rich or poor, no matter where you are, or skin color, or nationality. Fact is, everybody is a sinner. We have been born into sin. That's right. Refreshing comes when we repent of that sin and refreshing comes as we are ushered into the presence of God. So there is a correlation here. There is a correlation that we're not going to receive refreshing unless we repent of our sin. And we're not going to receive refreshing unless we come into the presence of God, which doesn't happen until we ask God to cleanse us of all of our sin and purge us of all our iniquity. When David had sinned against God, he had lost the presence of God for a year. He lost the presence of God. He lost the joy of the Lord. He tried to hide that sin. But then Nathan the prophet, the word of God came to him and spoke directly to him. And the word of God penetrated his heart from the prophet of God coming from the throne room of God. You can try to hide, but God sees it. You're going to be there for a year without peace, without joy, without strength, without the presence of God. A year without refreshing one that was one that was so anointed had the presence of God and the spirit of God probably could not pick up his instrument for a year. Maybe he tried to sing a song, but he could not do it. Maybe a few words came out, but he did not feel it in his heart. Why? Because David knew that he was hiding something from God. But let me tell you something about the Lord. God sees all things. There is nothing naked or hidden from the Lord. He sees all things. And God loved David so much. And God is no respecter of persons that the Lord would speak to a prophet to go and to speak the word of God to the king of Israel and he did and God dealt with him and thank God that David came to the Lord and repented and confessed to the Lord and when he acknowledged his sin when he no longer tried to hide it when he no longer swept it under the rug he admitted it he came confessing to God he is open and honest with the Lord now what happens but now forgiveness now what happens. Now the presence of God is ushered in. Then what happens? All of a sudden David is renewed. He is renewed in the spirit and the presence of God. And I want to say today that the church needs it more than ever. You need it more than ever. I need it more than ever. I can preach until I'm blue in the face. But what we need is the presence of the Lord today. Hallelujah. Could it be that a lot of Christians are lacking renewing and refreshing due to a lack of repentance? Could it be that Christians and churches are not experiencing God's refreshing presence due to pride? And a lack of acknowledgement of sin and guilt. And I declare to you today, yes. Yes. God bless you. (laughs) Yes. But if we would humble ourselves and come broken to God, confessing our pride and sin, I believe the presence of God would come upon us and we would be refreshed. Hallelujah. You know what I mean by the presence of God. You're driving down the road and all of a sudden the presence of God is poured out from heaven and you're driving down the road and your spirit just filled with God and you're praising and maybe you're speaking in unknown tongues and you're worshiping the Lord. Maybe you're at home or maybe you're on the job or wherever it might be all of a sudden unexpectedly the presence of God comes. Why? Because your heart is pure before God. Because you're not hiding or holding anything from God. And so oh, the refreshing comes and Peter said times of refreshing and there are times when the Holy Spirit comes and refills me and refills me and refills me me and refills me and Jesus is so real and so near I sense his presence he speaks to my heart and I feel the strength of God oh yes I do when I come into the presence of the Lord <coughs> excuse me oh they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength 
They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They should walk and not grow weary. They shall, they shall run and not... What how's it go? They shall... They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not grow weary. How's it go? Help me out, church. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Thank you. Isaiah 40, 31. In the presence of God. I'm telling you today that the church doesn't see its need for renewing and for reviving and to come in the presence of the Lord. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, God is going to hear and God is going to answer. Glory to God. He will, my beloved. As I said, listen, the 120 who waited for the promise of the Father spent 10 days praying and seeking God's face. I can imagine they searched their hearts as, as they, as, as, and as they did, they confessed their faults. And they confessed their sins. The Holy Spirit was poured out and they were engulfed in the presence of God. Divided tongues as a fire set upon each of them. They were renewed and refreshed and empowered. And we too can experience the same thing today. But the choice is yours. I'm done. Stand to your feet, please. Abby, would you come? Hallelujah. Abby, would you come, please? Hallelujah. I'm telling you, my beloved, but that's what it takes. Coming into the presence of the Lord. God, I come with a whole heart. I come with a true heart. I come asking you, Father, to forgive and to cleanse and to wash. Oh, God, all the self, all the pride, everything in my heart and my life, I pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father. And so what I want to do to you, my beloved Christians in the Lord, can I invite you to come up front just to pray with me, and may we seek God together. So I'm going to ask you to step outside of your comfort zone, so to speak, and to come up here and let us come and let us pray. Praise Him and let us worship Him. Let us magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us come into the presence of God today. Father, I praise You, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I praise You, God, my Lord. I'm asking in the name of the Lord, in the name of Jesus. I'm telling You, my beloved. The choice is yours. The choice is mine. You have that choice. God will not force you. God will not make you. But I'm telling you, my beloved, that when your car runs out of gas, you can have a $50,000 vehicle, but it ain't going anywhere. And the church can have all the modern conveniences of today. It can have millions of dollars invested into its building. But my beloved, without the Holy Ghost, it has nothing. Without the renewing, it has nothing. Without the refreshing, it has nothing. Oh, my friend, the devil wants to empty you out. He wants to keep you from touching others. He wants to keep you from touching heaven. Oh, hallelujah. But you've got to decide what you're going to do and the kind of Christian you're going to be. You've got to decide, am I synthetic? Am I genuine? Am I artificial? Or am I the real thing? What am I, Lord? What am I? What am I? Come on, church. We got to be honest with ourselves and honest with God. You don't have to confess your sins to me. Don't confess your faults to me because I'm not God. I'm not a priest. I'm not a high priest. Only Jesus you go to. Only the Lord. Hallelujah. And I pray right now, God, search our hearts, Father. Help us, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you, Father touch us. Let us be a people of prayer in 2020. Let us be a people that seek your face. In 2020, let us come clean. In 2020, I, I am determined to spend more time with my Jesus, more time in the Word, more time in prayer. In 2020, Lord, I'm not going to I'm not gonna be fake or phony or false or artificial, but I want to be the real thing. I don't want to be bonded leather where there's a mixture of the world in my, in my heart and my life because, God, I know the friendship with the world is to be an enemy of God. I pray in the name of the Lord, Father, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You are my God. You are my Lord. Abby, if you would sing a song for us and lead us into worship and lead us into the presence of the Lord. Lead us. Hallelujah. Because I, I know you've come ready today. Amen. That's why I am strong. Can you turn her mic up, please? Lord, my God, in your presence, and that's where I belong, seeking your face. 
touch me. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, I worship you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, touch in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You've got to decide what kind of faith you're going to have, what kind of Christian that we're going to be. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God, touch us, Lord, I pray, by your power and by your spirit, Father. In the name of the Lord, we need you, Father. We praise you, Lord. And we worship you, God. And we exalt you, Jesus. And we praise you, Lord. Cause me to have a heart after God's own heart. Cause me, Father, to seek your face. What kind of Christian am I going to be? I'm not making excuses anymore. I'm not going to blame other people anymore. This is between me and God. My heart and God. My soul and God. I'm determined to live my life for the Lord. I'm determined to be sold out to Jesus. I'm determined to, to hold nothing back from God, I pray in the name of the Lord. I'm asking in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Almighty God. Praise your holy name, Jesus. In your presence, that's where I belong. Seeking your face, touching your grace. In the cleft of the rock, we praise you, Lord. We worship you. In your presence, oh God. I sing praises to your name. Let's sing that together this morning. I sing praises to your name, oh Lord. Praises to your name, oh. Thank you, Lord, for this time together today. I give glory we worship to you, Father. Name. Give us a heart that's after oh, you, Father, Lord, to hunger for you, to desire you, to, to long for you, to name. worship you. Hallelujah. Oh, May there be a change in us, O oh God. May there be a change in us, O oh God. I pray in the name of the Lord. We open our hearts to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We worship you, Father God. We exalt you, Father. I give glory to your name. Oh Lord, glory to your name. Oh Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Oh hallelujah, Lord. Worship the Lord. Worship Him from in your heart. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. Lord, I pray that we would be a people that would truly sell out to you, a people that would hold nothing back. Lord, I pray that we come clean with our Jesus, that we would ask you, Father, confessing our fault, our error, our sin, our pride, flesh, self, everything, God. I pray the name of the Lord. And I pray, God, as we do, that you would usher us into your very presence. And as we come into your presence, I pray, God, that there'd be a renewing and refreshing as we learn to tarry and learn to wait and learn to cry out to you, Father, I pray. Oh, God, we love you and we praise you and we honor you today we magnify you jesus hallelujah 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 so take a moment church and pray take a moment right now and say father i need you i need you lord i need you lord as i read the bible it shows me my need for you as i look and search the scriptures it shows me my need for you i praise you god and I honor you, and I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah.
Magnify the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. It's our last Sunday here, Lord, of 2019. I don't know when you're coming, but I hope you come today. I hope you come today. I hope you come this day. I'm expecting your return. I'm believing for it, Lord. My heart is ready and I'm prepared. I thank you, Father, that we have a place we can call home, a place we can worship you, a body of Christ. Now, God, I'm asking you to bless all the people. Pray, Lord, that they would think upon what was said here today. And we give you glory and honor as we ask this today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming here this morning. Have a delightful day today. We'll have service tonight at 630 if you choose to come. But have a wonderful day. God bless you. Amen. Tell somebody that you love them. Amen.